Today, we're talking about osteomyelitis, what it is, how to catch it early, and why waiting too long can cost your patients more than you think. By the end of this video, you'll be able to recognize red flags, know when to escalate, and feel more confident when this diagnosis shows up on your radar. Here's what I hear a lot. It doesn't look that bad, so let me give it time. But here's the truth. Osteomyelitis rarely screams at you. It whispers, and if you don't listen closely, you'll miss it. Until bone is exposed, infection has spread, and the wound becomes something you can't just dress your way out of. For those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Voltaire. I've treated hundreds of wounds, and what I've learned is this. It's not just about bone scans or labs. It's about asking the right questions and noticing small signs most people miss. If you're new to wound care, or you've ever been unsure when a wound looks too deep or maybe infected, you are absolutely in the right place. You don't need to be an infectious disease expert. You just need to understand what to look for. And today we'll walk through it together. Here's what we'll cover. What osteomyelitis really is and what it isn't. Key signs you might be dealing with bone infection and diagnostic tools that actually help and when to use them. Also, when to refer, when to treat, and when to worry. Stick around to the end and I'll share the one mistake even experienced providers make that delay diagnosis. Okay, first things first, what is osteomyelitis? It's a bone infection. It can happen when bacteria spread from the bloodstream or directly invade the bone from nearby tissue, like from a chronic wound. And in wound care, this often starts with a foot ulcer, especially in people with diabetes or peripheral artery disease. Now here's the kicker. It doesn't always look dramatic. Sometimes the wound just stalls. It doesn't get bigger, but it doesn't heal either. There might be minimal drainage, or maybe there's a foul smell, but not much redness. That's what makes osteomyelitis tricky. It hides in plain sight. Think about the patients you see. Who's at risk? Well, people with diabetes, patients with neuropathy, those who can't feel pain, those with poor blood flow, patients with foot deformities or Charcot foot related to diabetes, anyone with a chronic wound that's been open for more than four to six weeks. If you have a patient with any combination of those, your suspicion should go way up. So what are the signs that make us pause? Well, here are a few red flags. Visible or probe to bone exposure, so you're able to use a probe to probe to the bone. A wound that suddenly gets deeper. New foul odor or increased drainage. A wound that looks stuck for more than four to six weeks. Also systemic signs, so that means elevated white blood cells, fever, but keep in mind these can be absent, especially in older adults. Try using a sterile cotton-tipped applicator. If you can feel the bone at the base of the wound, especially on the foot, that's a strong clue. Let's say your suspicion is high. What next? Well, you have a few options. There are x-rays, which are easy to get, but often not helpful early on. Changes may take weeks to appear. You also have MRI, which is more sensitive and specific, which is great for seeing changes in soft tissue and bone. Bone biopsy is a gold standard, but invasive and not always practical. Also, labs like ESR, CRP, and white blood cells can support your case, but they're just part of the picture. Remember, no single test gives you the full answer. It's about patterns a story that builds. Now let's talk about treatment. There are generally two roads here, surgical and non-surgical. With surgical, you remove the infected bone, so you think toe amputation, debridement of the areas that have osteomyelitis. There's also medical treatment, which involve long-term antibiotics, often four to six weeks. The choice depends on several things how much bone is infected. Also, how healthy is the surrounding tissue? And is the patient stable for surgery? Do they have adequate blood flow? Let me tell you about a patient I saw last year. He had a small ulcer under his second toe, nothing too dramatic, but he'd had it for three months. It hadn't changed, and a few clinicians saw it and said, let's watch it. No big swelling, no fever, just slow healing. By the time we ordered an MRI, the infection had spread. We ended up doing a toe amputation followed by IV antibiotics. And the hardest part was that it was preventable. This is why timing matters. Waiting too long can mean surgery instead of healing. When I see a wound that isn't healing, I ask how long has it been open? Can I probe to bone? Has the drainage or smell changed recently? Has it worsened despite appropriate treatment? Has the patient had previous bone infections or amputations? If the answer to any of those is yes, 
I raise the alarm. And this brings us to a critical point. You can't manage osteomyelitis alone. This is where we call in infectious disease, if it's serious enough, podiatry or the orthopedics team, radiology, endocrinology for diabetic patients, and physical therapy, case management, and nursing, depending on the case. Because healing isn't just clinical, it's collaborative. It involves a community. So if you remember one thing from this video, let it be this. If the wound is slow, deep, or just not acting right, think about osteomyelitis, because catching it early means you have options. Waiting too long means you may not. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out my next one where I talk about interdisciplinary care because wounds don't heal in silos. Stay informed and heal well.